And this next one, it's got a dual drive system, but it's all to the back wheel. You can see it's got front and rear disc brakes, which is a bonus compared to the last one. Just had rear disc brakes and regular front friction brakes. And this guy's got a, a mid-drive motor in the front, 1600 watts in the front that's attached to the gear system, and it's got another hub motor in the back for cruising. We'll take a look at the controllers. We've got just a quick splash cover over there. That's the controller for the hub motor. And then we've got a controller for the mid-drive motor. That's a remote control receiver with four inputs. I'll talk about that in a minute. On the back, we've got the same as the other one, the brake lights and turn signals. But I've made this separate from the battery box. The main reason I made this compartment separate, the controller compartment, separate from the battery box is because I wanted to take the battery box off and carry it and that's over here as you can see I've got a cigarette lighter adapter in the front so I can plug a 12 volt power supply into this switch on the side to turn the 12 volt power on and there's a lock so it'll lock to the frame we'll take a look at that in a second and this way I can take this off once I get to where I'm going and use it as a power supply in case you take it camping or anything like that. Battery box on. It's a little heavy, but it's not too bad. 14 pounds and 15 pounds with the other parts in it. Once you pop that on, this lock goes through the front and that's going to keep it from being pulled off of there and carried away. And then I tighten up the wing nuts on the bottom. And that's really just for vibration so the thing doesn't bounce around. The lock's going to keep the battery from going anywhere. And there's your charging port. That's your DC accessory switch. Pop this open. And... everything you need to go hunting. In Ohio you can actually take a six inch handgun and hunt deer or I think it's five and a quarter minimum and so I made it so this fits perfectly in there with a magazine. Which I generally don't carry around but there's my 100 amp breaker and then in the controller panel on the bottom there's actually two 50 amp breakers for each motor for the front and rear motor there's my 24 volt or I'm sorry 48 volt down to 12 volt power supply the inverter and that is a 30 amp model so that'll give me once I get to where I'm going where I get hunting I want to use it to keep my phone charged and my cameras and all that good stuff it'll charge it for a whole lot of hours and still have enough to get back when I'm done. Lock that guy up so no one can steal it. Plug everything in for the 12 volts. I want to put the camera down to push that in. Okay. I had to turn the camera off for a minute. I can sit it up on this mount. I didn't think anybody wanted to watch me wheeze and sweat while I picked that thing up and set it on the mount. So 
Hopefully got my voltage plugged in, everything good to go. So this thumb switch is for the back hub motor. Just to get it cruising. It takes a while to tighten those spokes up right to get a good balance on there so it doesn't flop all over the place. And then this three wheels, so I don't saw my legs off when I ride. And then to really take off, this is in first gear, pretty low gear. I can switch gears. Take a closer look at the controls. Let's see if I can get that on there. There we go. Now this isn't going to start off in high gear. If I, if I actually did this while I was on the ground the motor would keep turning on and off on overload so I would really start off on a lower gear or start off with the hub motor first and then use the high gear to kick it in. climb one hell of a hill, especially by throwing the hub motor on top of it. I'm going to cycle it up. I'm going to go all the way up. I'm going to go through all the other areas. I'm And now for some of the nerdy stuff. We'll throw in the turn signals. There's a light. This is actually a remote control from a car. I got it hooked on there on the line, so if I crash into something, I don't lose the remote. But it just stays on there in Velcro. And I can pop it off and take it with me. Or slap it on there. And that's for the light. I don't know, let me see this camera if, it'll, if it's showing all this. Yeah. So that's the button to turn on the headlight. There's one for the horn. Pretty sad horn. And then there's a the right. left turn signals and just like the older one we've got right and left and a hazard and we've got brakes and when I flip on the light the tail lights also come on, two side tail lights.
and my remote alarm because I'm that big of a nerd. <laughs> And there's mechanism. This wasn't too bad to make. I had to put a spring, a compression spring on there to keep the chain tight. That all came with SickBikes, SickBikeParts.com. Um, this one's full suspension, front and rear, so I don't jar my teeth and shake up the battery pack. I do most of the time. I run off the hub motor, but climbing big hills or when I want to get stupid, I'll. I'll use the mid-drive motor. I'll pull in something. I don't have a trailer attached to it yet, but it's not maybe too big of a deal to slap one on there. So I think the hub motor comes from Conus, I believe, dot com. I'll put I'll put the links on the bottom where to get the parts. And then sick bike parts. And this is a GMC top kick frame, it's all aluminum, it's pretty light, the whole thing weighs a eh, hundred-ish pounds, maybe ninety pounds, which is fairly heavy for a ten-speed, but it'll also do forty-something miles an hour. And on this battery pack, this is a twenty amp hour battery pack. I'm not sure where that came from, I really don't remember. Um, but I'll find the link and stick it on there if you want to build one. And it'll go 35 miles, give or take, on a charge. Depends on what kind of stupid stuff I'm doing. I, I, can, I can burn it out in 16 miles if I'm getting nuts. I think that pretty much covers it. This is pretty much the kind of stuff you can do with these things now. There's lots of kits you can buy to build them. Um, these ones might be a little over the top. Got a link at the bottom of the page here. If you want me to build one for you, I can do that. This one would cost, hold your breath, about 4200 bucks if you wanted to buy one of these. But that's still, in the land of electric bikes, that's not too crazy. And then that one is about 2700 bucks, give or take. But... For about twelve, fifteen hundred, you can build a nice single single stage bike that'll do 25, 30 miles an hour and run a long, long time. But you can either hit the links if you want me to build one. You can be more than willing to let you send me a check. But this is something you can learn to build on your own. The people that sell the parts are really helpful, especially SickBikeParts.com. Those guys answer the phone and call you right back. As a matter of fact, I had a question on the mid drive motor. And the guy was on the, the owner was on the way to the airport and he called me from his car to tell me how to fix the problem. So enjoy. Thanks.